In this story, I want to tell you about my friend and brother in the Lord, Ronnie. But first, I'd like to talk about the dimensions of the love of Christ. In Ephesians 3.18, you know, the Apostle Paul tells us that he prays for the saints, that they might grasp how wide and how long and how deep and how high the love of Christ is. Normally, there aren't four dimensions, right? When you measure something, the height or the depth of something is the same dimension, depending on whether you start at the top or the bottom. But you do have four dimensions if you're in the center of something. Imagine a chandelier hanging, and so there's the distance above it and the distance below it, as well as the width and the length. And so this is such a beautiful truth that that added dimension, if you will, that we only grasp when we're in the center of his love. Now, you may have heard how these four dimensions overlap with John 3.16, and it's quite a beautiful thing. For God so loved the world. That's the width of it, right? Don't you dare disagree with the Lord Jesus. It's the whole world that God loves, and it's the whole world for whom Christ died. Uh, he wants everyone to be saved. And, um, and then, of course, the second phrase, that he gave his only begotten son. There's the length of his love. God gave and gave and gave and gave until he gave his one and only son. Then we have the depth of his love that whoever believes in him should not perish. The love of God reaches right to the gates of hell, rescues those called brands plucked from the burning. And then the height of his love, but have everlasting life. That the gospel offers this amazing opportunity not only to be saved, but to be reconciled to God, to be lifted up to glory, to be placed with Christ in the heavenlies, to eventually be with him and like him forever. So we have these various dimensions of the love of God. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how wide and long and deep and high the Lord Jesus' love is for sinners. And simply by telling some of Ronnie's story. So, Ronnie's a dear friend of mine. I, like my grandfather used to say, I love him from the ground up. And uh, he's such a joy to spend time with. I visit with him every week. He lives behind prison bars. And uh, he told me a little of his story. This is just a, a portion of it, but it's so moving to hear the story. He grew up not knowing his father. Father abandoned the family, lives up in the north. And uh, Ronnie has talked to him, I think, maybe once or twice on the phone, but he's never actually seen his father. Uh, His mother had a very hard life. She had to look after four boys and two girls in what he called a little raggy house uh, with lots of holes in the walls and very little. They had a little tin uh, stove, and Ronnie had to chop the wood with a little two-headed axe to provide for some warmth in the house in the winter time, And um, she, his mother, had had this serious accident where some glass had been impaled right into her head and it had never been removed. Things were very poor in those days and uh, medical advances were, were nothing like they are today in rural Mississippi. And so as a result of this, she would have violent seizures. Well, By the time Ronnie was 15, he didn't believe in God. His experience in life was, you couldn't depend on anyone. And he grieved over what happened to his mother, this terrible recurring tragedy of these seizures. And uh, his father had abandoned the family. And really, he just couldn't believe in God. Um, He felt that the whole world was against him and he didn't really have a chance. However, his mother did believe in God, and she would speak to him about the Lord. But whenever she brought it up, Ronnie would either ignore her or would mock the idea, said that you know God was like Santa Claus. In 1982, 
the week before Christmas, there was a snowfall in Mississippi. And uh, Ronnie's mother had a series of violent seizures. And at that time, he was so upset. He said to her, there's no God in heaven. The only God there is, I think, your God. And she grabbed his lips and twisted them and said, don't ever say that again. Well, a few days later, because of the cold in the house, they moved to um, an aunt's house who had central heating. And uh, this was four days before Christmas. In the morning, uh, Ronnie's mother didn't come out of the bedroom where she was sleeping. And so his aunt sent him in. And when he went in, he discovered that his mother had died in the night. He believed this was a judgment of God on him. And as a 15-year-old boy, he made his way back alone to that raggedy house, stood in the very spot where he had called his mother God, the only God there is. And this is what he said. I want to talk to my mother's God, the God my mother believed in. You took away the one who was closest to me because of what I said. I've heard you're a jealous God. I want you to know that I won't ever, 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 ever serve you. And with that, he left the house and went to live on the streets, 15 years of age. He got involved in gang life, drug life, surrounded by sin and death. Years passed by, he became a slave to, to crack cocaine. And like the prodigal, no man gave to him. And driven one day by his desperate need for drugs, he committed an awful crime, and he ended up in jail in 1989. And there, even before his sentencing, he was so crushed under the heavy load of his guilt. And he began to wonder, could there ever be forgiveness for a sinner like me? Well, one day to his cell there came a little black preacher from the city of Jackson. His name was Devon Adams. And he shared with Ronnie the dimensions of God's love. That God's arms were wide enough to receive this poor, guilt-ridden sinner. That God's gift of Christ had come to save the likes of Ronnie. That he was able to take him up out of the place of spiritual death and lift him up into fellowship with God. Well, Ronnie wasn't saved immediately. He barely could read and write when he entered prison. Couldn't really read through his Bible and and um, he was busy, of course, going through the court case and getting sentenced and so on. But a few years later, um, he was gloriously saved, I think, in 2003. And I say gloriously saved. You can see it on his face. I say he could hardly read or write. But he began to work hard. He got his GED, that's their high school equivalence, in 2014. And he got his bachelor's degree, earned it in 2018, took some seminary courses and uh, began to serve as a field minister there throughout the prison. You know, when you meet him, the Lord's love just uh, radiates from his face. And so that boyhood promise that, that he would never, never, never serve the Lord, the fact of the matter is that that's pretty much all he does to serve the Lord. You know, Ronnie never gets tired of telling people about the Lord Jesus. And this beautiful verse in Ephesians 1, 7, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace.